I must be in the right place, and you must be Todd Labrador, the famous birch bark canoe maker. Would you like to see my shop? Love to. But it smells wonderful in here. Yeah, that's uh, some cedar and some sage. I uh, usually burn some when we, when we do some work in here. And you get that cut wood as well and the birch bark. That, that's right, yeah. So I see a few different styles of canoes in here. What, what can you tell me about these? This one here is, is sort of the ocean model. The Mi'kmaq canoes also had what we call tumble home, which is sides actually sort of round. The ocean canoes are like 20 feet to maybe 28 feet long, where the lake canoes were only nine to 16 feet or so. This small one over here just bent the bark up and doing some sewing. So what I'm sewing with is a spruce root. Once, once we dig it out of the ground, we take all the bark off and we split it. The neat thing about birch bark canoes, um, everything that we need, we can find in the forest. If we make a hole in the bark, we can patch it and we can use spruce gum to make it waterproof. The only thing that would cause the end of the project would be if the bark caught on fire. Right. <laughs> mm -mm, what kind of soup you got going there? We got spruce soup. You want to just peel that all the way down. It's like a banana. Yeah. Comes off really easy. Now if you boil it for like two hours, the bark will actually almost cement itself on the wood and you'll never get it off. So, so an hour's the sweet spot? Yeah. Wow. So Todd, is this, is this how you get in touch with your roots? This is what I call finding my roots. <laughs> Nothing, not even a laugh. I tried. This root has, has a ridge down and we're gonna split this the whole way, eight feet, and we're gonna end with, with two pieces. So do you always go for eight feet or is it, if, do you wanna get a longer one sometimes? Uh, I've, I've uh, collected them 20 feet. 20 feet? And sometimes you... <laughs> whoa, yeah, that's okay. whoa, whoa. So uh, sometimes you can go 20 feet and end up with four pieces 20 feet. There you go, very good. And then this last bit, do we just try to... Just pick. Yep. Look there. at that. All right. It's like magic. So once we get that down a bit smaller, then we'll go and do some sewing on the, on the little canoe. The thinner you go, the more challenging it is because uh, once it's thinner, it can it can break easy. It can break off a lot easier. So I just go by the feel in my hand. I can tell if that's too thick or too thin. When you say go by feel, how many years of feel is that? That probably started in 1980, so. Uh, my third grade math tells me that's more than 30 years. <laughs> this is great. I, mean, I must be, you know, it must be that Anishinaabe blood. I, I, I'm really surprised. Why would you be surprised that I'm doing really well? What a terrible thing to say. I'm surprised that it, it's, this is a Mi'kmaq root. Very good. Look Very at good. that. There you go. That's not too bad. That's good and thin, too. Well, that's not the piece. That's the piece. Oh, the one I dropped? <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Well, anyways. Is there any trick to this or just sheer brute strength? That's just uh, brute strength, basically. And after a day of this, you realize why our ancestors had really big big hands. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. Because <laughs> your hands get so sore. And then we go again. All right. Uh, no disrespect, Todd, but I think I pretty much got the hang of this. There's not that much to it. Mm -hmm. Mind if I whip one up and use your equipment? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Todd, get ready to have your mind blown. Huh? You got the Mi'kmaq way, this is the Ojibwe. 